action. Yes. Getting ready for my interview with She Speaks Live. It's the Rayleigh, Rayleigh Show. Everybody, everybody say my name. Got my own thing. I got my own thing. Yeah, yeah. It's the Rayleigh, Rayleigh Show. Come on, y'all, say it loud. Say it proud. I got my own thing. It's the Rayleigh Show. It's the Rayleigh, Rayleigh Show. Hello, good evening, everyone. It's your girl, Coach T, coming to you live for another dynamic episode here at She Speaks TV. And tonight, oh my goodness, I am so excited. I have been watching movies all day in inspiration of this dynamic diva. She is an NAACP award-winning actress. She is a coach, a songstress, an all-around ball of fun, uh, an empowering Black woman. I'm excited about her, but more importantly, we cannot get enough of this smile. Everything I saw when I looked at this woman was this radiant energy. And so tonight to the She Speaks TV family, I want to welcome all the way from California, where we need that sun and that warmth, none other than Ms. Braylee Evans. How are you, beautiful? I am fantastic. Thank you for having me. I was like, oh, who's she talking about? When you were introducing me, I was like, come on. I'm a ray of sunshine. <laughs> Look at God, look at God, look at God, all the way across the, all the, way across the earth. My goodness, I, I'm excited. Um, literally, I was going through your social media, and I was just looking. I'm like, wow. First of all, you and your mom, I have to say that that looks like your sister. Right. I mean, Y'all make, make that black don't crack. It looks real good. Let me tell you something. I've gotten that my entire life, and I'm telling guys, like, it's my mom. <laughs> don't say that to her. <laughs> I've gotten it all my life. I love it. Have you guys always been really close? I mean, such inspiration to watch you two in action. Yes, it's, um, I, I always tell people my mom has been like my sister too, because my granny, it was just like, she was our mom. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. So it was like, uh, my mom, like, mom, you're more like my sister because mama was our mama. <laughs> She's like, I'm your mama. But yeah, so we've been close forever. I love that. Um, it's just, I, I always, I, I have a 22 year old. Oh. So, so we get it everywhere we go. And they're like, there's no way that's your daughter. I mean, I get the triple take. Like, right. Oh, How? Because you're 22. <laughs> How? How? <laughs> so one of the things that first captivated me when I, when I was looking at Riley is the word water walker. Now, hmm? okay, girl, come on, give us. Yeah, I was like, let me get this shoulder action popping. <laughs> I love um, I'm a PK, preacher's kid, you know, literally coach, church, church of God in Christ. I yes. Get God in cash and get popped for it. Mm -hmm. um, but literally, a PK raised in this church. And one of the things that stuck out to me when I first saw the words water walker, I was like, okay, God, talk to me about that. I'm excited about that. Is this a faith walk? Share, share this with me. So, water walkers is my platform that I share my faith through. Uh, I do believe that it is the has the main stage really uh being an actress is what allows the platform and the people to see but god knew that i would take that platform uh and take it with me wherever i went so that's where i encourage people to live by their gifts uh many people are working nine to five jobs just for the money or jobs where they make billions of dollars just for the money but if they would just hone into the gifts that god gave us all they will be living such a happier life. So some people don't realize yet what their gifts are. So I have some techniques and strategies that I help people find exactly what their gifts and purpose, what it is so that they can get to it and start really living life. Yeah. Wow. And of course we know when you step outside the boat, that's right. it. That's it. My thing is, so if you, even that metaphor, that, that's like, that's where water walking come from, obviously, when uh, Peter got out of the boat, but he didn't get out of the boat, A, until Jesus said, come. He heard the voice of Jesus and he began to, to just do the thing, right? He didn't look back at the other disciples and say, should I go? What do you guys think? Do I sound good? Do I look good? Is everything okay? He just went on and start walking. And as he kept his eyes on Christ, which is the ultimate prize, he was doing the impossible, right? He was impossible walking on this water. The moment he began to look at the 
turbulent sea, which is like doubt in finances and support and fans and all the stuff that he maybe not had in place, that's when he began to sink. But the best part of the story is he began to sink, but he never did drown. That's the best part of the story that people don't highlight. Like, I'm like, you guys, do you understand what Jesus just told us? We can try anything. And if we keep our eye on him, we'll, we'll experience success. And even if we decide to fall into our human ways, he'll still save us from drowning. I said, what? I'm about to, I'm about to jump out here and live my whole life. <laughs> Girl, you better preach. You said he never did drown. No, he began to sink. And Jesus came right on that water and walked him to shore. So you still get to the finish line. You know, it's a journey, not a destination. But it, at the same time, it's like, try it. Get out the boat and leave all that doubt, fear, family, friends, all that stuff in the boat. Get out. So I always encourage I mean, people have heard it a million times. You hear impossible. That's impossible. And we should always read it. I'm possible. We should all be attacking something that's impossible. That's when you're really getting a chance to show your faith. Wow. Girl, you just you just gave me a whole new revelation because I've always remembered him hearing and then him moving. Mm -hmm. And in any endeavor that we pursue in life, when you hear it, you walk it on out. Right. And he walked it on out. But I love it. He never drowned. And that's revelation that's for best. someone listening today, aspiring to achieve a goal, aspiring to build a business, aspiring to pursue your dreams. Get out there and walk. And as long as you have the faith, honey. Come on. Around. Because guess what? What We know what the formula for faith is. Faith without works is dead, right? So right. faith plus some walking, some working, some movement. You know, you're going to have God's support when you when you do that, when you trust him in that way. It's when you talk about it, but don't move on it. And you're like, when is it going to happen? Well, never. Never, because you have to trust him enough to get get going. Give God something to work with. And I bet you he surprised you. I love that. That should be a t-shirt. Right. Be a t -shirt. Give God something to work Give with. God. Tell my team to write that down. <laughs> Give yeah, God something to work with. Yeah. Let's, let's jump in because, of course, I have stuffed all your goodness and all your amazing. I can't wait to hear these questions. I was seeing a earlier um, and watching you. Um, let's talk about, wow. Girl, I'm looking at all my notes here and I get excited. But let, let's talk about your most recent project, as you call it, the salacious ambitions. Yeah. Talk about that. How, how did you land that role? First of all, landing the role was super epic. I was on set of my very first season regular opportunity with a show called Last Call with uh, the likes of Erica Page, Carl Payne, um, uh, Malik, it was just so many Whitfield, so many people on that show that were just dynamic and incredible. That, and I was so excited that someone would trust me to be on a show every single episode. But what God had for me was right in the hallway as I went to lunch one day on that set, and someone said hello, and I said, Hey, how are you? <laughs> you know, I kept walking. And next thing I know, George Pierre, I love you forever, George Pierre, casting director out of Atlanta, said, Braley, come in my office. Somebody want to meet you right quick. I'm like, I'm trying to get my fish, man. I only got 30 minutes. So I go in there, and it's Sheila Duxworth and Benny Boone. Sheila is one of the executives over at Will Packer Media. And uh, Benny Boone said, when you walk by, you look like you could play this character on the show um, that I'm doing. Her name's Rondell. I said, honey, I am Rondell. Now, can I go get my fish? Okay, claim it, honey. I am. I don't know. What, and I, I'm bold, but that day, I don't know where it came from. You know, I was just like, but I realized when they said the name Benny Boom, I was like, wait a minute. You're that video guy. You've done all the major videos and you know, I'm a singer. So one day you're going to do a video for me. He was like, okay, sis. And I was like, okay, so is there some lines y'all need me to read or something? Because I got to go. They was like, whoa. 
I was like, they're like, we'll come back tomorrow. You can read on your lunch break. So that is exactly what happened. They came back the next day. I had to study the lines for the show, plus the scenes that they gave me for the audition. They came back and went in a little room. I read the lines and I went on back to work. I already had a job. So who was worried about it? Not me. I had a check. I, y'all, you know, y'all here on, on my check time. And next, 30 minutes later, my agent was kicking down the door with a bottle of champagne like you just booked another one. What? And so that's what caused me to move to Atlanta for eight months at the time. And I ended up staying. Wow. So, so you, first of all, I'm from, uh, I live in East Oakland <gasps> right now by Lake Merritt. Girl, and, uh, yeah. let Girl. me find out you from the town. Yes, honey. East Oakland, uh, Lake Merritt. And honey, you played the life out of Rondell. Like I felt, like I get chills right now because I felt all of that energy. Let me just you talk about Rondell. gentrification and we know what Oakland was going through. Yes, it and is going through. Sweeping. Yes, and girl. So of course, how easy was it really for you to play Rondell? Because you channeled really well. Can I tell you, I understood her. I mean, I have to give it up to Jamie Giddens, our creator of the show. Uh, and kudos to all the other writers on the show as well. Um, they wrote a strong woman who w- was unafraid to s- put her life in front of big business and be the voice of the voiceless, which was the community that was kind of being trampled over for these new uh, ginger fires to come in. So, and I am that way. You know, if I see some injustice happening, I kind of speak out. And that's where Rondell and I were very, very similar. Um, we did have some traits that, that weren't alike, but um, I knew her. I felt like she's that aunt, that cousin that always got your back, that's always, you know, on your side. I just knew her very well. And I would even say this, I'll tell actors this. In my audition, I may not have been word for word with the, because remember I only had one night to study, to, to read for this part. Um, I believe that I knew the essence of her so well, I could still hold the conversation on whatever topic it was in character. And so I believe that served me when I read for the role and the other person's, you know, giving me the other dialogue back because I know who she is, I can properly respond. So I think doing character breakdowns, ladies and gentlemen, actors out there, um, get to know the character as much as you can, because then you can play. And you can also be free to show them a little bit of what you got, you know, but still in the in the uh, confines of the storyline. Now, how was it? Because I always watch uh, the 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 sister in law, if you will. How was it playing alongside that diva? Because honey, <laughs> she she played. I, I mean, mean she made me want to jump through the screen. And she's so good, like. Some people, I've been watching her and Essence, a Robin and Essence, you know, all my life, you know, all my TV life, but, you know, when I was very, you know, into it, you know, and um, I've always just loved them, but I never wanted to be an actress. So I would be watching them as a fan, you know, a serious like, oh my God, these, you know, I'd be watching the story as if it was really them. I didn't really make the differential between, oh, that's an actor doing a part. Uh, because like I said, television was never on my trajectory. Um, I've always wanted to sing. Singing, that was it for me from the age of three until an adult, you know, till college years. I was like, what are you gonna do after college? Sing, where are you gonna be when you grow up? Sing, that was always it. Um, and so I am the original Braylance. I don't know where Beyonce. Braylance, Braylance. Braylance. Yes, that, okay. that's where Beyonce got all her moves, all of her everything was from Braylance because I'm a couple years older than her. Okay. Uh, but, but that's what had happened was. That's the inside scoop don't nobody talk about on the E True Hollywood. But no, but acting just kind of took off and I, and, I, and I went with it. And I've now learned that acting has opened the door to be able to sing again, which is why I have music out on all platforms. Girl, so let's talk about that because the soundtrack of obviously I saw the ambitions earlier. How important is music to your soul? I know you said since you were little, you wanted to sing and sing and sing. And I always say if you want to make God laugh, 
tell him your plans. Oh my. So you said you said that acting was never on your radar. Didn't so even think about it. How'd you bring the music back in? So my um so I had finished college and started working jobs and uh people were still like you're so talented why are you just like bringing a job and they're like you know music industry is hard i had the same language as everyone about it and someone said oh my gosh i thought you were an actor gosh you move like an actor and introduced me to their agent and their agent said oh honey you you should have been on tv so that little bit of belief in me from someone else and i believe it was the god in them speaking to the god in me who happened to listen i bet you there's been a lot of times where people may have been saying that or other things to me that i didn't hear but this one time it, it hit my ears different and i listened and went on 10 auditions and on that 10th audition is when i landed my first commercial and when i made that first forty thousand from one day of working i said I'm an actor because I just made what some people make all year in one day. <laughs> and it was really like that for me. And so after that, I began to do the study, you know, going to the classes and all. But what I learned is my very first movie was Just Right with Queen Latifah. I played her best friend, Miss Leslie. And um, we did the take so many times. And I said, am I doing it wrong? Why are we doing it so many times? And uh, Queen Latifah was like, no, they're just moving the lights and the cameras around, you're fine. And so I just got bored, can I be honest? I got bored. Mm -hmm. And so on the next take, they said, okay, we're gonna go again, back to one, and action. And so we were doing our little talk and I was so bored of saying the same thing 1,000 times that I happened to say, courtside tickets coming my way. And that was the seat, that was the take that they kept for the movie. And so wow. now it's almost as if I told all the millions of people who will watch just right that I'm a singer. Because they said, wait a minute, that's a strong voice with her little riff in there. She could sing. So then people started asking me for more singing gigs. Mm -hmm. Such as that. And then there was Sparkle. And then, and you had to audition singing for Sparkle because don't forget, I was one of Sparkle's background singers at her finale show. So I had to sing for that too. So you see how singing just has been going hand in hand with the acting for me. How was that experience? You know, we all love uh, Auntie Whitney yes. Houston. How was that experience? Uh, Actually, I watched the movie today again and that scene where she's in the church I promise you, as my mother would say, I probably wanted to go ahead and lay prostrate. Huh. That's his eye. Huh. Is on. Can I just tell it's you? On. I'm going to talk about that scene in particular. We were sitting in that church, and Whitney said to us, to, it was over 100 extras sitting in the pews to fill up the church. Um, extras were all in the choir stand. It was myself, my mom, Tamla Mann, uh, mm -hmm. and um, Sparkle, which was. Um, Jordan Sparks, and she said, hey, you guys, y'all didn't come here for the, I know we're shooting a movie, but y'all not here for the Whitney Houston show. See, because Jesus is a superstar right now. So we're going to give him glory and honor. Oh, just thinking about it makes me like a little teary because she wanted to make sure the tone for that moment was set and that people weren't thinking they're getting a little free Whitney Houston concert. She made us stop and realize this moment was not about her. Th these lyrics that she's about to sing are so real and that you should really grasp hold of them, hold of them for yourself and say, his eye is on the sparrow that watches me. I know his eye. Why should I feel discouraged? Why? Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows fall? Oh, when she went through that whole thing, when I tell you the director was on the side of the camera jumping about three feet off the ground. He was just jumping, just jump. He just couldn't believe what he was getting. And if he was in the spirit, people were like, it was just a moment. 
it was just so fantastic. And working with Mara and Celine McKeel, uh, Celine, her husband, who was the director, and Mara wrote it, um, just fantastic all the way around. The experience of being there in Detroit shooting for a month, it being my second film. I mean, really, God, wow. really, who? Fair. Like favor ain't fair, y'all. If you just do it God's way, he's like, watch what I do next. Like, I'm so excited to see what he's going to do in my life, even now. Like, you know, I go from project to project. I really don't know what job is coming next, but he's built up this faith muscle in me that I don't even care. <laughs> I just. Isn't that crazy? And wait for the moment. naturally flow with it, which takes you back to water walkers and operating in your gifts and moving. Did you ever get scared? How did you get so confident? In the beginning, I think, I wasn't scared in the beginning. So I had this period of fearlessness. Then I went to acting class, just to be honest. Got around some other actors and they were talking about how auditions are hard. It's hard to get a part. And that was the language, right? So that was in my listening. So that was now in my spirit. So I begin to adapt that and you have what you say. So it be, there was a stretch of time where it was barren. It was hard. I had to get a job. Um, and then I said, wait a minute. I, don't, I just woke up out of it one day and said, I did not move from Oakland to LA to get a job. I could have did this in Oakland. So hold up. God did not bring me all the way to LA and experience the things that I had already done, the two movies. I'm like, why am I at a job? This doesn't make sense. And when I got my mind right, it's just like, it just clicked back on and then I just started booking again. And then it was never hard again. Um, so I really want people to take away from this moment is that you have exactly what you say. You say acting is hard. The music industry is hard. You know, then you have what you say. But the moment you call it easy, you'll find that it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard. The word says that you speak those things that are not as though they were, and you begin to just walk in the manifestation thereof. Girl, we don't have church up in here. Honey, from wow. one should have been PK to another. It's, you know, that's it. You you also starred alongside the amazing Gabrielle Union. Oh, my girl. That's the bestie. Yeah, talk about that because Gabby is a, a good nut. I love her. She is such a sweet woman. Um, she's so, totally about her work. And now that I've been a series regular, because I was a guest star on that show, I didn't understand the weight that was on her shoulder even then. Um, I didn't understand what really being a lead in the show meant. Like it meant work-wise, workload-wise. I had no clue. But now that I've been a series regular and also been the lead of a show, I'm like, oh my God, girl. We had so much dialogue. We used to talk like this. We used to all talk really fast like this because we were trying to get all the lines in. And so there was a lot to remember, a lot of moving parts. I was just looking at some clips of um, Being Mary Jane the other day, and I was like, how did I remember all that? <laughs> but when I tell you, it was an amazing experience. And um, one person I'll never forget is Miss Nima. Nima is a uh, African-American uh, director, and she has a... Fantastic resume, but she challenged me on that set, and I was literally scared of her. I was kind of like, "Who is that woman?" Because she came on and was a big personality, and she's like, "Do you know your lines?" I said, "Yes, ma'am." I was like thinking, "I didn't get this far not doing the work," but that it intimidated me in a bit. But I have this something in me that's a fight back kind of person, so you can challenge. It's that Oakley. Oh, challenge me all you want. Make me cower down because, baby, I'm a comeback swing it. So one of the first scenes that we shot, if you guys can take go back in your minds, is when it's just Mary Jane and I on the couch. And we're going back and forth about her hoish ways, right? And we're talking about it. And I said, um, we're like, the lines were going back and forth, which told you a lot of lines. And all of a sudden, I break it out into song and say, uh, I can validate your ratchet, your ratchetness, your ratchet. I just, I don't know where that melody came from. I don't know how it came out of me and why the words in the script just said, you like me being your friend because I validate your ratchet. That's what it said. 
But when this girl reads that on the paper, she hears, because I can validate your ratchet, your ratchetness, your ratchet. Get my song, it's on iTunes. So, you know, and so and after that scene, I remember the, the room being like, whoa, they like, yell, cut. And everyone was like, whoo. They, they're like, that was great. That was fantastic. That was energy. That was all. And it was all because Nima put that finger down on me. I had to be like, hold up, dog. I mean, I know everybody in here is already famous, but I, I've come to take my place. So, yeah. Yeah. I love, you know, when I think about that scene and the role that you played uh, with Gabrielle Union, it, it takes me to the fact that you have by far one of the most amazing girl squads. Now, I'm 44 years young. Mm -hmm. um, I have been an introvert, extrovert, believe it or not, and I've traveled solo a long time. And here I am now at 44, and I have literally, in the last year, God said, okay, I'm tired of you walking by yourself. Come on. I'm going to send you some women that you can roll with. I'm going to mm -hmm. help you literally grow. And, and I'm going to make sure that you understand that each one of these women that I send to you, they have a purpose, and you have a purpose in their life. And honestly, when I was looking at everything today, I said, this girl has an amazing girl, Scott. Talk to me about the power of girlfriends, because, honey, my girlfriends, as of late, Post-COVID, I got new girlfriends. Can I tell you something? life-saving. Let me tell you something. I have been blessed with friendship from early on. Um, I have to, I can't start with those that you saw on my social media. I got to start with the first friends. Um, my first girlfriends were elementary girlfriends. We were besties, Marlo and Sonia. We were tight. And I'm an only child, so friendships mean the world to me. Um, so that's where I begin to learn how to be a best friend. I remember when things were going on with Sonia, uh, I would get headaches. And I'd be like, Mom, I have a headache. Something's going on with Sonia. And then we'd call her house and they'd be like, yeah, she's not feeling well or whatever. It was crazy. Then moving on up to, well, I can take it back from there. Um, my cousins, those are my first best friends, Stacy and Sharon Hope. Um, you know, Stacy and I grew up singing together. We had a little group called Studio Two. You know, little girls with our little taffeta pink dresses on singing. And then uh, my next set of friends was in uh, junior high school. We called ourselves FAM, B210. And we were on the cheerleading squad. Then the next, those same girls went on to high school together. And there became like 12 of us. And we would, one of us had a car, Roxy had the car, and we all would pile in this car and we would get out. Like you see, I went to the circus and you see the clowns. And you're like, how are that many people getting out of one car? People did that to us all the time. They were like, ah, ha, ha, they're in a B210. So we named our crew B210. So everyone, even today, they was like, how's B210? That's how people in Oakland like reference all of us, like 12 girls. So if people say, how would 12 girls remain friends from high school until now in your 40s? And, I, and it's right. because we had so many personalities. All of us have learned to let people be people. And it has been like just an amazing, you know, walk in life with these different personalities of people. And then here recent, not even recent really, because we been some years in but my um girlfriends now that i call my square um we are connected on such a spiritual level that um i have never in my years i'll just put it like this i have an online store that everybody knows braleyevans.com because i talk about it all the time well before any thanksgiving sales before any cyber mondays or, or What's the other one? Black Fridays. My girlfriend went on my website and bought all. I need you to hear me. Not She did not leave one, but I have these uh, faith journals. She bought them all. Like, how many is in stock? I'll buy. That was, I said, honey, that's the largest sell I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to buy them for, from you because I'm doing something. I was like, okay. Okay, thank you. I said, which one of you? I, I put that on my social media. Which one of your friends has sold you out, bought everything on your website Man. at full price? Didn't it? No discount. Kanique Sky, let me just give it up for you right now. Let me, but no, but then there's more because there's a there's a Christina Johnson 
Don't let me have a new product come on my, she'll be the first to, she's the first to buy it. So she and I are always vying to be first to buy each other. If anybody is selling something, well, between the two of us, she's like, she buys it first. So she, our first sales belong to each other. And so, I mean, just where do you get that? Where do you get right. that kind of level of friendship? And then there are other girls that are in our group too, and they're just as supportive and, and just as, you know, got it going on from, you know, other interior designers to one that has a skincare line. Um, the other uh, is a pa paints houses and also does sleep therapy for babies. Like my crew's so stupid, it don't make sense. Like they're just amazing. They're amazing. Sleep therapy for babies. Yes, I mean, every one of us is literally living in our gift. This group of friends, no one has a job. We all live by faith. If we don't, if we don't work these gifts, we don't eat. So, you know, we we own like we are so we hold each other accountable. We are always thinking what's next. We're strategizing for each other. It is. I'm just. I am blessed. Like I'm so wealthy when it comes to friendship. I, I'm just. I, I can't. I, I, anybody who doesn't have friends, you should pray and ask God for some. But you know what the word says is show yourself friendly. That's part. So I'm gonna need you to add me to your list of friends because I'm a pretty dope friend when you get to know me in real life. Come on, you my new friend. Can I tell you this, Chief? Coach Chief, I'll tell you this. I am the type of person that never meets a stranger. So when you had already, when we came on, I saw you getting your makeup done earlier. I was already enjoying your energy. Like, oh, okay, she done pop a poster up too. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, and then told me the Oakland Lake Mary thing. I was like, oh, yeah, we good. So then there's that. I've never met a stranger. So, hey, girl. Hey, girl. Your energy is authentic. I love one of the things, not only to show yourself friendly, but authenticity. You know, one of my keys to living and survival is authenticity. There's so many people out here copying cats, trying to be everybody else. But mm -hmm. what I've learned is if you just do you, to be the best version of you. Can't you know nobody you do it better. Can't nobody do it better. Nobody. Imagine that. Like, you got the hold on what you got. Can't nobody. And that's what I tell people. I remember someone once mentioned being in competition with me. I said, oh, honey. Baby girl. I don't want to be you. And you could never be me on your best day. Right. They you can really get. Don't want to be me. You this cross that I bear. But and then and I ain't even bear no cross. Thank you, Jesus. And I ain't got to even knock on no wood because God got me. But can I just tell you? <laughs> on on anyone's best day, you could never. You know, your journey is your journey. Don't look at how somebody else's race is being run. It's like I, I believe my authenticity. Uh, in friendship allows me to play all these best friends in every movie, every TV show. They keep asking me to be the best friend because that's who I am in real life. I am a, such a good friend. Like, I enjoy the job. So, and when, and when you do what you love, it really has never worked. Naturally. Naturally. Listen, so I post this in my Insta story um, and my Facebook page and I ask my followers some questions that they wanted to know about Brayley. So the first question they asked is that, what are some things that people seem to misunderstand about our sister? Hmm, misunderstand. When I'm misunderstood, could be, I think very quickly and sometimes speak very quickly. And my heart ain't, you know, it's like, oh, charge to my mind, not my heart. Um, so I think I've been misunderstood by speaking too quickly on a thing and I'm very frank. I'm also a Sagittarius. I don't know if anybody knows that about people born in this arena. We are honest to a fault. If I think something is whack or ugly, I'm, I just say it. I, I don't have the decorum to say, uh, maybe you should get a different size. I go, girl, you look a hot damn mess in that. Like, so yeah, I can be misunderstood because I really just... Tell it like it is, but it always is not the best. I love that. Well, you know, again, that's what makes you true to who you are. Yeah. And uh, life is too short to sugarcoat a whole lot of things. Period. That's I mean, that's mind. how. That's, Tell me yeah. about 
a movie that touched your heart um, and sparked a project in you? Um, one of my favorite movies I would watch over and over again was Julia and Juliet. I don't know if anybody knows that movie, mm -hmm. but it's a movie about um, Julia Childs, you know, the, the famous chef with the cookbook. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, yes. it's about a young lady who was hating her job and she, um, always liked to, to cook. And so she began to start a vlog, a, a blog rather, and she would type about her experience, um, with this cookbook. And she decided I'm going to cook everything from front to back in this cookbook. And so she just started cooking every day and cooking and baking. And then her blog, people began to pay attention as she kept cooking and blogging about it. And then she became this famous blogger and she doesn't even know what happened overnight. And to me, that's that classic story of when you just follow your gut on something, it may be the most random. You're like, I don't even know how you make money from this. It doesn't even make sense. God will make room and set you before great men when you simply I say, when you do God, he does you. Ooh. You know what's it. crazy about that is that so many people, I've, I've got a girlfriend who I, I mentor, and I hear people say, oh, well, you know what? I'm going to put plan A in place and plan B, and I got plan C. And I'm like, I have none of those. I, I just have God's vision. I execute, and I let him do the rest. And I love how you said that. That goes back to water walkers again, walking blindly, walking on faith, trusting and believing God, executing and trusting him to do the rest. People are like, oh my God, I can't believe that you don't have X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, it wasn't meant for me to have. Yeah. Because when God gives you vision, he makes provision. Every whatever time. Whatever God orders, he pays for. Come on. Let's and discuss. He paid. God orders. Come, he pays for it. Now that's a t-shirt, girl, that you need to go on do. Can I just tell you something? He's so awesome, and God loves us so much that what he gave, his only begotten son. So he paid for all of our sins, all of our crosses to ever bear has already been paid in full. Like we're actually walking out the inheritance that we already have. When people are waiting on money or resources, I'm always like, Jesus already died. What else you want him to do? Hmm? He already paid it all. He paid it all the cross. So since he paid it all, you just need to go get it. Like you just need to go and look to the bank and say, how are we supposed to work this out? Who's supposed to do it? Start asking. That's another, uh, by, one of my favorite Bible stories is uh, how he fed the multitude. Everyone always highlights that he broke his fish sandwich. Come on. He took that little fish sandwich and fed these, you know, five, 10,000 people with it. And it's like, that's not the most important part. The most important part to me is that he told the disciples, I don't know, you better figure it out. He made them figure, they went to Jesus and said, Jesus, the people don't have no food. He was like, Go, what, you do what do you have? He was like, he, he put have? it back on them. And guess what they had to do? What do you have? 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 They had to go ask people until a little boy, what do you have? Two fish and five loaves. <laughs> but, and the rest was history. So my point is, if you think you're lacking in any area, who have you asked? Who have you asked? You know, it's so interesting you say that, Bradley, because even this week, you know, there's other projects that I work on outside of being here on TV. Um, but what I've learned over the last 10 years is God positioned me in a sales space. And I always tell people, everything, what's in your hands? I've heard God say it many times, what's in your hands? And so I start picking up the phone and I start calling my girlfriends and I start saying, who do you know? Well, matter of fact, who do you know? And matter of fact, who do you know? And together we come together. See, the problem is the one thing my grandmother said, if we understood our strength, right? Oh. I always say collaboration is the new currency. Come on. Everything you have is around you. And oftentimes we get into our pride and we get stuck in ourselves and we say, well, I don't want to ask that person. And if I ask her, she might be nosy and she might be hating. No, 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 boo. who do you know? As a matter of fact, who do you know? And who do you know? And even and if they don't tell you, we're going to make this thing happen. Even if they don't tell you or give you some off lead, that doesn't matter because your requirement is to do 
what God told you to do and to ask. He says, if you seek and knock, the doors will open. But it, you're just supposed to do your part. Don't worry about the outcome. The how is not your business. It's like, okay, let me just do my part and let me ask and let me, you know, hello. And then the other part of the story that people don't highlight too much is that when he did get the loaf, he broke it. So a lot of people are like, I'm in this broken place. You know, my heart was broken. The relationship didn't work out. My bank is broke because I'm negative. My This is, you know, broken, broken, broken. And I'm like, broken is where to be. Because he broke the bread and then he blessed it. And then it fed the people. That's the formula. Like sometimes we need to pull back from the Bible, from the little story and pull out the numbers, pull the formulas out and say, wait a minute, the bread multiplied after it was broken. So wait a minute, if I'm in a broken state, only thing that can come next is multiplication. Come on, God, come on. I, I don't know. This is interesting. I wrote a book called Broken Crayon Steel Color. And I talked about one That's one. you? I know that book. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I wrote this book called Broken Crayon Steel Color. And I talk about the fact that when I was a kid, we was Poe. P-O. P-O. So one of the other two letters. So we was Poe. But the crayons, you didn't get a new box of crayons in my house. No. Grandma said, break them things. Peel that little paper back. And they still color. So I believe that brokenness is required, right? Hands down, you've got to be broken. Wow. Gracefully broken, hands down. And understand that just because you've gone through something. So when I hear people with these sad stories, even when Whitney Houston was in the movie, she said, and as you tell my story, let me give me the honor of telling it correctly. Just because you've been broken doesn't mean you lost your purpose. And if you understand that the breakthrough is in the brokenness. Mm. Let me get there. Yeah, the let breakthrough that... is in your brokenness. Let me just, let's let that just hang there because that that's somebody to hear that. Somebody needs to get that. What makes you feel inspired, Rayleigh? Really? What, what what makes you feel inspired to operate at your best self? Seeing people win, man. Seeing people win, seeing the the Oprah, seeing the uh, Kamala Harris, seeing the the uh, Christina Johnson, seeing the Tabitha Brown, seeing the <laughs> seeing my friends, people I know out here winning, seeing Tyrese always coming up with something new, doing something, inviting me in. Like y'all don't understand. I have some great people around me, and and seeing other people win on these different levels inspires me because I'm like, hey, hey. If God did do it for you, he sure going to do it for me. So that inspires me to keep going. That inspires me to what I said earlier, give God something to work with, which is why I was like, uh, quarantine, I couldn't act. Oh, but baby, <clears throat> I can sing. So that's where the music came in because I was like, well, I'm not going to sit here and not eat because I need to work to eat. So I'm just going to get on my microphone in my, I recorded that song in the house. Like, come on, you can't tell me what you can and cannot do. And then, of course, things opened up and I was able to act again. But in the meantime, I was going to give God something to work with in another area. He, I'm multi-talented. I, I always tell people, multi-talented people usually have an issue. They feel. I used to say that. This is a terrible thing to say. It's a curse to have more than one gift. No, it's not. You have to be focused on one of them. Let that one speak for you and the other ones will open up. That's the only thing that people forget to tell multi-talented people because you will be all over the place trying to be, you know, a singer, trying to be an actress. Focus on one of them, the one that pulls you, tugs you the most, and I promise you, you'll get to do the others. But when you look at the history of people who are multi-talented, who are already big and famous, they first are known for one thing. And then they branched out. So that's the only thing out. that you should do. When I, mind you, I came up singer, 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 singer. But when acting began to pay the bills, I had to focus smooth on acting. But as acting began to go, now singing is back open again. So it's perfect and time. You know, again, being the PK that we are, um, God gave more than one talent. He gave then there's talents. And he watched to see what people would do with them. Right? And I don't want to be caught. becomes... You're going to bury it? I don't want to be. Or you're going to go out there and multiply. multiply. I don't need to give thanks in the process. I do not want to be caught with buried talent. I don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. I just had a girlfriend, Adama Wilson, That's say her name. Friend. Don't get caught with buried talent. Don't, don't get another t-shirt, y'all. Don't get caught with buried talent. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Adama Wilson, 
a girlfriend of mine just passed away recently and I, it was like, even her, in her death, it, it turned me up another notch. I was like, what I won't do, I will live out loud. Like I will, cause I, now I feel like I got to live the rest of, cause she had so much life and, and she was the life of the party. Anywhere she walked in the room, she was, hey. And I feel like, okay, bet. Everything I do gonna have a little bit of you on it. But now I got to go doubly hard because I've, I've got to take up the space that you used to take up. So, okay, you want me, I got to, you forcing me to get bigger now. You're forcing me to really not only put a song out, but where's the music video? You, you're forcing me to go all the way, ain't you? So I'm, I'm just super excited about some projects that I have coming up. I'm producing, I'm writing shows, um, I'm creating content all the while. Like, is this thing is is really 2020 has been an in, in, incubator for me it's been a cocoon for me um uh, my butterfly wings will pop out january 1 20, 2021 wow let me ask you something and actually uh it just came across my my chat line here the question says i'm curious to know does Braley's faith in god determines which which role she takes um I wouldn't, well, there has been a couple that I just didn't feel comfortable doing. And so I did turn those down. But uh, for the most part, I haven't really been offered things that were too, too outlandish for me. Um, and, and mind you, God has given me a platform to where he can trust me to play a murderer, a, a, a mistress. He can trust me to play something that's totally off the wall because I'm going to come back to the people and say, that's what you don't do. Now let's discuss what you do do, you know? So I can be, I feel like I can be trusted with roles that are less than savory, um, be, you know, to us Christians, I would say, because I'm going to speak about it, you know, to help guide people into the light, rather than I'm doing this so you guys can all be in the dark. No. Mm -hmm. Girl, I just get my spirit. I keep, you know how we are. We keep hearing. I, I heard another T-shirt that I can trust me. That that that. I can trust me. Wow. That that I mean, just the fact is. So therefore, again, utilizing the very gifts that He gave you. You know, what kind of advice would you give to someone struggling um, to operate in their gifts, or let's just talk about acting or living between LA and New York? What kind of advice can you would you give? I would tell someone to a never call their self struggling. It's in your mouth. It's right here. Yes. That's going to change everything for you now. Like literally right now in this day, get in your mirror, say your I am's. I am an actor. I am sought after. I am amazing at what I do. I understand the language. I am a lead actress. I am a uh, a uh, um, Golden Globe winner. I am an Oscar Award winner. I am. You have to remind yourself of who you are. We are all spirits having a human experience. This ain't real. <laughs> the stuff that's in the spirit is real because it was there before it manifested, right? So if we right. get back to realizing that we're really superhumans, then we would realize that struggle is really a joke and a lie that the enemy wants you to believe. But the moment you just snap out of it and be like, wait a minute, I have everything I need in this moment. There's a roof. My stomach is full. In this moment, I am okay. And so this is my experience because I'm going to need this information for something to come. I'm okay. I am okay. And things will begin to start shifting in your life and you'll be like, I'm really okay. I haven't got an apartment. I'm really okay. I haven't bought a car. Like, I promise you. So I believe that it's all in their tongue um, because that I think that's the biggest thing that, that God wants me to get people to understand is watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. That's another t-shirt, really. Watch your mouth. I got a t-shirt line coming, y'all. It's about to have 25 t-shirts. design, five of them. Design. Yes, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Right. Oh, M-O-U-F. Okay, right. watch your mouth. Yes. Yeah, what, you know, only say what you want to see. That right that's it. Only say, say what you want to see. Say that again. Only say what you want to see. Only say. My goodness. 
if you could turn back the time, I love, if you could turn back the time and talk to the 18 year old Braylee, no. what would you tell her? Girl, it's going to be all right. And I would have, and I would also tell her, trust your, trust your gift now. I didn't trust my gift all the way back then. I was um, looking for approval from other people. I were, I needed uh, validation, you know. But if I, I wish I could tell her, girl, you got it, honey. Your body is banging. Every, I remember people telling me to lose weight, honey. If I had that eighteen-year-old body, I had then. Oh, honey, y'all. Huh. Y'all think y'all be talking about Braylee got curves, killer curves. No, baby, honey, that 18 year old was banging. But I would say, trust yourself, love yourself, be bold, sing when someone asks you to sing. I remember I would cower down so many times. Like I would, I would tell her to leap, try it, go for it. Um, yeah, I, I would really push her out of the boat. I love that. If you had a billboard, literally, with anything on it, what would it say? <laughs> it would have my logo, brilliantis.com. Yeah, I love. <laughs> and, and tell us, since we're talking about the beauty that you radiate, what are you using on that skin? So I told you one of my girlfriends has a skincare line called Skin Cubed. Why don't all of you become a Skin Cubed cutie? and get like all of us and get this skin that you don't this the makeup is so good that you don't need makeup but if you put makeup on top of it you even you shine and even more um so yes yeah, skincubed.co on instagram um oh and go now it's cyber monday <laughs> like, i don't know i'm like y'all better get these discounts while you can but it's all natural it's in it's a black owned business that's run by a mother and a daughter a mother who decided to show her daughter how to run a business. You know, she's just a young girl, a little early, 20 year old something. And her and her mother are running this company and it is just a beauty and fantastic to see. And uh, their website is gorgeous. Everything is done in excellence from the products to the jar, glass jars, to how they package them and send them to you, how they keep in touch with you um, and how they research the different herbs to put in the honey. Skin cute. Uh, what's next for you? Uh, you what's next? Oh my goodness. I have new products coming out. December, I'm going to be hitting you guys with the first, uh, really, I think I'm going to do the first 25 days of Christmas. I'm going to let it go on Jesus' birthday. But we're going to celebrate my birthday from December 1st to December 24th. And then I'm going to let it up. In Sagittarius school. All day. Sure. In full set shares form. So every day of the month, I have something special. Make sure you're on my Instagram. Make sure you're uh, at BrayleyEvans.com. There's going to be new products, sales going on, music, videos coming out. I mean, it's going to be so many things. December 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Y'all, it's on the first day of Christmas. Brayley gave to me. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to be right there. Shout all right, all right. Everybody. Come on. That means something new is coming tomorrow. Uh, right oh, that's right. It's tomorrow's the first. Oh, my God. I'm so, I've been so excited. My team's like, calm down. I've been giving stuff away beforehand. But yes. I love it. Well, I want to say thank you so much. This has been amazing. Girl, when I say, if you could see under here, it's 24 degrees in Georgia, so we glad you're not here. <laughs> oh. But the chills running through my spirit. I just love when God divinely puts some stuff together. I love and it was it. such a blessing to connect with you. Are so inspiring. Speaking of one of my other girls, shout out to Nicole. Yes, my, my, that is my heart, that is my bloodstream. That's my baby, and I thank her so much. Thank you, Nicole. Yes. Happen. She works around the clock. Such an amazing vessel. But you keep doing big things, sis. Thank you. You keep blessing the nation. Let me know about that t shirt line when it comes out. Honey. More importantly, <laughs> thank you for joining us here on She Speaks.